and 21st Foundation has been promoting peace uh, across Taiwan Street. Uh, why don't you do a survey on how people really think about peace? Uh, do they really mean peace when they say peace? Since everybody seems to be happy if United States uh, show willingness to continue selling arms to Taiwan. Everybody feels secure, everybody happy. If there's no arms, uh, we think we will be in a, a big trouble. Uh, but that, does that really mean peace? And then um, they will think about this. I, so I push them a little bit more. I say, well, remember what happened when um, uh, we had this celebration in Taiwan of the 100th anniversary of the Republic of China? On the day of the 100th um, birthday of the nation, uh, Donna Rumsfeld uh, went to see President Ma ying And Ma ying bowed to him and, uh, and also said that uh, uh, he was a, a, a second lieutenant when he retired from the army, so he was much lower than Rumsfeld, so Rumsfeld really <laughs> senior to him. And then he awarded Rumsfeld the highest national award ever given to a foreigner. And so I asked my host at dinner, does this sound like a peace-loving people to you? Uh, a country that given a war to Rumsfeld, which almost a criminal in Europe. Uh, they got a little bit interested. So I said, well, if you're willing to um, invest, investigating in what people really think about peace, I'm willing to design the research uh, for you. So we did. Um, uh, but then, uh, what I have in mind uh, in this research, before I start, when I do my research design, what I did is to find out how much, uh, um, how much people uh, would like to uh, sacrifice in order to uh, achieve uh, political independence from China. If if you um, uh, compare value of peace with value of independence, how people would wait to balance them? How, wh where's the balance? Uh, how far people uh, are willing to go? That's what I was thinking to find out in the beginning. So I had uh, some of the questions. Um, a couple of questions that I asked uh, uh, was um, suggested to uh, other large survey, social survey in Taiwan in the past, but they, um, most of, well, all of them actually turned down my suggestion. I was actually only want to ask two questions um, with, uh, oops, let's find the question. The, the two questions I was really interested to ask in the beginning was, uh, let's see, uh, D4 here. If China resorts to armed unification and the government gives up fighting, the people should continue to fight by all means. That's one question. And uh, the other question is, uh, hmm, where is it? Okay, D1 here. If the government conscripts people to have war with China in order to achieve independence. People have the right to deny conscription. conscription. That, these are the two questions I have had in mind for a long time, um, but I didn't get any chance to, to do any survey of this. But I did write something out of, uh, out, out of this initial thinking. I called it um, the right to surrender, people's right to surrender to their enemies. Um, that of course caused a lot of trouble in Taiwan because people think if you are, if you have the right to surrender and a PLA come, then would that mean that Taiwan be part of China immediately? And I remember uh, Minister of Defense uh, held a news conference exactly to answer that question. Uh, we didn't know um, in the beginning, why Ministry of Defense had that specific news conference until nobody asked the question and the spokesman point to a military newspaper, uh, asked the generals to ask the question. 
the generals ask him the question that uh, Professor Xi said the people have the right to surrender to their enemy. How Ministry of Defense uh, respond to that? <laughs> so we know the whole purpose of that conference is to answer my question. <laughs> uh, uh, then of course they gave some standard question. And the reason Ministry of Defense wanted to hold a conference to answer that question was because they had um, they had um, 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 uh, mammals from uh, legislatures telling them they will be asked this question in the next session um, uh, during Q&A at the legislature. So they decided to hold a news conference to, to, to preempt uh, the question that will be asked by the legislature. So they actually not target the media, target the legislature. It is the legislature targeting this question. Uh, I'm interested in people's right to surrender or people's rights consciousness that they can legitimately decide whether they want to surrender or not is because I think if people have the belief in their mind that they are the one deciding whether they want to fight or not, then uh, uh, of course then they, they can decide to surrender to whatever enemies they don't want to fight. But that doesn't necessarily mean uh, uh, anything specific about the future of Taiwan or relationship between Taiwan and China. Because if people can surrender to Chinese, then people of course can continue to surrender to other people. So that means that uh, this rise to surrender is a rise to control life, rather than the rise to giving in to a specific regime. Um, but I guess most people cannot go into the second step. They're only interested in whether or not uh, this will allow the PLA to take over Taiwan uh, freely. So I have these two questions in mind. I've been asking uh, my students and other people these two questions because I think we can actually uh, divide the world into, let's see, where is it? Uh, here we go. Uh, no. Here, this is one, okay. Right, and this is the one. Uh, on current. Right, I can see this, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, but people can see, right? This is huge enough. Uh, because if you set up a cross table um, from answers of, to these two questions, then uh, you could see that people can be categorized into four different types of rights of thinking. Um, if people, these two questions ask, ask two things. One is that if you want to initiate war in order to acquire independence, would you do it? And the other question is that if someone invades your ter territory, would you fight or would you give up fighting? Uh, so it's kind of different things. The one thing is more active. The one question is more active. The other question is kind of a um, kind of a reactive. It's, it's, it's responsive to a uh, situation. Uh, I would think that those people who believe that they have uh, the rights to control their own life, uh, they may answer these two questions in different ways. It's not. It's not that they will answer the question specific, uh, in, in, in a common way. If you have only one question, would you surrender if PLA attacked Taiwan? Then you have only one dimension. But if you ask these two questions, you could actually see people can be separated. Even though people believe they have control in their own life, they can still be uh, a break, broken down into different types of rights conscious. Rights conscious referring specifically to their... To their uh, thinking on their own subjectivity. So if, uh, if people uh, will, uh, let's see, this rights to territory refers to those people who will not go out to fight for independence if nothing happened. But, but they will try very hard to defend their land if invaded. That's I call rights to territory. In Chinese, actually, I was calling according to this about this aboriginal consciousness, in, meaning that people who are not interested in, in the life of the rest of the world or not interested in expanding or conquering the rest of the world, but you don't come in here. So I call this 
uh, in Chinese it's called Aboriginal Consciousness. And these are people who will not fight in any, uh, on the other side, the, uh, oops, but you can see my, wow, yeah, it's very clear. Uh, these are people saying that if you ask me to go out to fight for Taiwan's independence, no way, I'm not going to fight. If you're going to, uh, if you're going to tell me to give up if people invaded Taiwan, well, I'll give up. Okay. So, so this type of people will not fight in any case. Okay. That's, you can call it right to surrender, but it's not necessary. Uh, they're surrendered to PLA. And there are people, of course, very strongly believing in Taiwan independence or any, uh, any uh, uh, quest for independence in the, the other parts of the world. If you have to fight to get your independence, you do it. If people come in and your government decide or your countrymen decide to give up, I'll still continue fighting. That's, that's, I'm, I'm looking for my own independence. And there's also interesting group of people, which is not a small number, 21%, almost a little bit over uh, one-fifth of the population or respondents said, they said that uh, they would not, uh, they, would, uh, they would go along with the government to fight for independence actively, aggressively. But they would also give up if the government gave up defending the invaders. I, I call these people um, ready to submit to whoever is more powerful. So if the government tell you to do this, you do this. The government tell you to do that, you do that. If the invader is stronger, you surrender. If you're ready to fight for your own independence under the government's leadership, you do it. Uh, so you can divide people in this way. But this is just something I want to show you what I really want to do in the beginning. But then uh, uh, after I uh, got the result of all these questions, I'm no longer interested in that uh, cross table, although you can still uh, write uh, articles out of that uh, cross, uh, this breaking down of the four categories of peoples. Uh, basically, you, could, you can see from, uh, let me go back, you can see that uh, people are really quite strong on their belief in Taiwan's independence, right? Um, half of the people would be willing to fight, uh, or almost half people would be willing to fight in any case, right? Um, so you, this this is a good message for for any. But that doesn't really mean, of course, uh, if conditions really require them to fight, they would go out and fight. You don't know uh, because uh, people answer the question out of the uh, context, so you really don't know what they will do. Uh, in, uh, in specific uh, situation. All right, what I actually found out from this uh, uh, survey, and that actually lead me away from my original uh, research design, is that I find that, uh, first of all, I find that most people feel quite uh, uh, impotent facing cross race relationship. We could uh, look at the, uh, let me try to enlarge it. So you could, oops, too big. You can see. Uh, most of the questions when asked, people show quite pessimistic uh, uh, feeling. Uh, the two very dramatic ones at the bottom. Uh, no. The, uh, we're proud of democracy and liberal democracy in Taiwan, but I show you really the pessimistic view uh, about democracy as that is in practice. Let me see. Uh, all right, okay, here we go. Question seven and nine. If a majority of Taiwanese expressively supports independence, China will renounce the use of force as a means of unification. As you can see that, um, well, with pros and cons, pros and cons. Uh, well, 80% uh, of people say uh, no. But that doesn't, you know, that's common sense, right? But look at the next question. 
If a majority of Taiwanese expressively supports unification, China will renounce the use of force as a means of unification. Still, 51% of people say no. That should be a surprise, right? We would think that, well, if we uh, accept unification, there will be no threats uh, from China uh, using force. But we say no. Okay. Uh, suggesting that people have a very low sense of control over peace across Taiwan Strait. So that's very interesting. That means that uh, democracy as a uh, source of legitimacy doesn't really prompt people to assert their sense of control over, over things uh, across Taiwan Strait. Uh, but on the whole, uh, let me just quickly go over this 10 question I ask, and I'll read also the Chinese, uh, original Chinese um, uh, presentation of the question. So some of you may have um, a deeper feeling about the question if you can hear uh, the Chinese uh, wording of it. The first question, if the government conscripts people to have war with China in order to achieve independence, people have the right to deny conscription. Uh, it's, I think it's not a coincidence it's become the first question because that's what I care most in the beginning. And the Chinese wording is that 有人说如果台湾为了争取主权独立而与大陆发生战争政府动员人民去作战人民有权拒绝动员请问您同不同意这种说法 The next question If China resorts to armed unification and the government gives up fighting the people should continue to fight by all means in the Chinese wording, 有人说如果大陆采取武力统一台湾，即使政府放弃抵抗，人民也要抵抗到底。请问您同不同意这种说法？ The next question, uh, you've seen this before. If a majority of Taiwanese expressively supports independence, Taiwan, uh, China will renounce the use of force as a means of unification. In the Chinese wording. 有人说如果台湾多数人民明确表示支持独立中国大陆就会放弃用武力统一台湾请问您同不同意这种说法 uh, The question that coupled with this one If a majority of Taiwanese expressively supports unification China will renounce the use of force as a means of unification In the Chinese wording 有人说如果台湾多数人民明确表示支持统一 中国大陆就会放弃用武力统一台湾，请问您同不同意这种说法？ Uh, the next couple. Uh, oops, but it doesn't move. Even if arms purchase will cause tensions with China, Taiwan should still proceed with purchase. Uh, 有人说就算征购国防武器造成两岸的紧张台湾仍然要继续购买武器请问同不同意这种说法 The question coupled with it If arms purchase requires a higher tax people should still support uh, 有人说为了增加防卫力量即使政府加税人民也应该支持请问您同不同意这种说法 If the ruling party is the DPP, Democratic Progressive Party, China will not force unification. 有人说如果由民进党执政,大陆就不会急着推动两岸统一。请问您同不同意这种说法? Next one, if it is the DPP who carries out openness to and exchange with China, people should feel safer. Uh, 有人说如果由民进党推动两岸关系的开放与交流会比较令人放心请问您同不同意这种说法 The last two questions Oops. The longer the current situation lasts the more bargaining chips Taiwan will have with China 有人说目前两岸的现况拖越久 台湾对大陆的谈判筹码就越多请问您同不同意这种说法 the last question, 
Taiwan will become independent eventually, even though China opposes. Uh, in the Chinese wording, 有人说, Taiwan总有一天会独立,就算中国大陆不愿意,也没有用。请问你同不同意这种说法? Uh, I, I guess we can go through this 10 question and show you the result, but it doesn't really, you know, I mean, uh, most results, it's not very uh, optimistic. Uh, I guess we don't really have to show the result uh, for you to understand why uh, people are not optimistic about it. Like, I don't have it uh, with me, I must have it somewhere. I should have it here, but I, I forgot to put it in. Uh, maybe this is one? No, this is the. Okay, is this the one? Actually, this is the one, right? You can see from the list. You can see, for example, um, the one I just mentioned, if uh, Taiwan will become independent eventually, even though China opposes. 46% of people say yes, 53% of people say no, or um, at different degrees, say no at different degrees. Um, the longer the current situation lasts, the more bargaining chip Taiwan will have with China, 34% of people uh, say yes, but 66% of people say no. So you can see on the whole, people who are holding a uh, pessimistic view is uh, sometimes slightly uh, more or sometimes much more than people holding optimistic view. Uh, how much you think DPP can help to control the steel hill cross Taiwan Strait? You have D3 and the D5. D3 asks, uh, if the ruling party is DPP, you know, China will not force unification. 28% uh, of people almost say no, and 70, uh, say yes, 72% of people say no. <laughs> uh, if the DPP who carries out openness to an exchange with China, people should feel safer? Well, slightly more than the last question. 33% of people agree, and 63% of people almost uh, disagree. So, so on the whole, you just you could say, oh well, people feel you know uh, they cannot control uh, distribution across Taiwan Street by electing a um, pro-independence party. Uh, people cannot uh, have a better uh, control over the Taiwan Street if they wait longer. People cannot have uh, uh, control, better control over Taiwan Street if they say they want to reunify with China. It doesn't seem to be just any way that people can um, really develop a sense of control over uh, Taiwan Strait. But this is just very superficial analysis. Just look at the uh, immediate results from the survey. But if you go deeper, you do some other analysis. You do factor analysis like I did. If we do factor analysis from the answers of these 10 questions, basically you find, I never had such good statistic fit when I do factor analysis. But somehow, the fit seems to be so perfect this time. You have uh, three factors coming out of factor analysis, um, uh, grouping uh, the answers to these 10 questions uh, into uh, three dimensions. Uh, these three dimensions uh, seems to be uh, quite good in terms of uh, uh, explaining people's answers to their questions. Because you can see the statistic correlation is quite high. Usually, uh, my past experience, if, if it's more than 0.3, I take it. I take with 0 0.333 and 0 0.412. Oh, I took this two questions as one factor. I, I'm satisfied with 30, uh, you know, 30 percent. But now you have 709, 60, they, they really very fit. That means that all these five questions are highly correlated with one another. I, I mean, answers to these five questions are highly correlated to one another. That means that if you say yes to, or if you agree with this question, 
If it is DPP who carries out openness to and exchange with China, people should feel safer. If you say yes to this question, then the chance that you will say yes to some other question, like if China resorts to army unification and the government gives the fighting, the people should continue fight by all means. So you see, you see, there's there are quite good fit here, uh, and these are the five questions. Maybe I should. Just read them again, so you could have a, a, a stronger sense of how questions or answers to these questions related with one another uh, positively. If the DPP carries out openness and exchange with China, people should feel safer. Agree. Taiwan will become independent eventually, even though China opposed. Agree. If the ruling party is the De De Democratic Progressive Party, China will not force unification. Agree. If China resorts to armed conflict and the government give us fighting, the people should continue to fight by all means. Agree. The longer the current situation lasts, the more bargaining chip Taiwan will have with China. Agree. Then, of course, you can turn around and say, disagree to all this question. The reality, perhaps, is that most people uh, have said disagree uh, to all these five questions. But since the answer come together through factor analysis in this way. That means there's, uh, it's, it's like one dimension, you know. If you move closer to the other end, then you are, uh, you will t probably tend to agree with all these five questions. If you move to uh, another end, then you probably uh, expect that uh, you will disagree on most of these questions. Uh, so it's not, looking at the macro distribution of agree and disagree to each specific question. Rather, we should look at the dimension itself. The dimension tells us that if people agree, uh, then they agree, they tend to agree on all five, five questions. If they disagree, then tend to disagree on all five questions. Okay. And there, in other words, there is a dimension whatever name you give it to it, there is a factor that would affect people's answer to all these five questions. And that, that factor, we could name differently. Some people suggest that we can name this factor as a resistance factor. I think it's, it's, it's fine that shows strong sense of resistance to China. But since I'm also interested in how people um, feeling about their their ability to control the result. So I name it as a prospect factor. In other words, uh, would your prospect change if you have a different ruling party, if you have a different time frame, uh, if you have a, 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 a different uh, conflict, confrontation situation? What, how would that change your prospect? So I call it prospect uh, dimension. And in other words, that if people feeling they can uh, control cross strait relationship better via the uh, via elections of pro-independence party, then they will feel they can fight uh, China uh, if they want to uh, 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 strive for unification. And there's second, uh, the other second factor here. Second factor is also very interesting. If, if we look at the uh, results of this uh, arms purchase, it's interesting here. You can see that even if arms purchase will cause tension with China, Taiwan should still proceed with purchase. 68% uh, people agree. 32% uh, people disagree. But then, of course, the people are pragmatic. If you ask if arms purchase requires higher tax, people will still support. Then uh, you can see the uh, support drop dramatically. Uh, then you say, oh, well, then uh, uh, people, uh, people don't want to spend money. Okay? Even so, they, they, uh, they want to buy arms. But if you look at the factor analysis, uh, the message is quite clear. If arms purchase requires higher tax, people should still support. Agree. If the government, uh, even if arms purchase will cause tension with China, Taiwan should still proceed with purchase. Agree. So even though you see more people 
uh, decide uh, to give up on purchase if they have to pay more tax. You can still see a factor running through the answer of these this two questions. Uh, you can call it, I call it determination factor. So if you are determined, uh, so then you will answer these two questions uh, um, agree, with, with agree. Okay. And there's another question highly associated with this determination factor. If the government conscript people to have war with China in order to achieve independence, people will have the right to deny conscription. No. You have no right to describe, uh, uh, to deny conscription for the sake of independence. So that's really determination. So if people say, you know, we should buy arms, don't care about cross relationships. We should pay more tax to buy arms. Don't worry about your own economic well-being. We should fight China actively, even though um, China did not come. We should fight if the government chooses to fight. Um, we go ahead. So this is what I call determination factor. In other words, there is a factor uh, which related to what we call determination that will affect people's answers. The other factor we find, oh, let me see here. The, also, the in in the determining determination factor, there is a question which is which statistically shows the uh, relatedness of 0.363, which I consider good enough. And this question, I'm sure it doesn't surprise you to go along with the determination factor, is that China resource to army vacation and the government give us fighting, the people should continue to fight for me. Yes. Uh, although this one is not as strongly associated with the other, but that doesn't mean there's no relationship. The third factor, which I call the legitimacy factors. Do we have legitimacy? Uh, 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 do we consider legitimacy an important factor affecting cross relationships? The two, the two questions. If a majority of Taiwanese expressively supports unification, China will renounce the use of force as a means of unification. Agree. If a majority of Taiwanese expressively support independence, China will renounce the use of force as a means of unification. Agree. That's something also interesting, I think. Uh, that means it is not your positions on independence or unifications that allows you to feel a stronger sense of control. It is the, the legitimacy generated by the popular polling that gives you the sense of, uh, of control. That means you can affect the Chinese decision by showing that you have a popular support. Uh, despite the position is uh, in line with the Chinese position or not. It doesn't really matter. Uh, but then, of course, you say uh, the other side of the story is that people say no. <laughs> in the reality, of course, we just see majority of people say no to both questions. But then uh, there is a significant of responders say yes to both questions to allow. And, and this small group of people, smaller group of people um, must have answered this question very consistently in order to give a very high statistic uh, performance here. So almost, 80, almost 80, and this is uh, 0 0.65, no, 66. Uh, so you have a legitimacy factor suggesting that if people feel strong about legitimacy, the power of legitimacy, then they think they can have better control of cross rate relationship. So on the whole, from this factor analysis, we acquired three dimensions, three factors. And we can say that if people feel they can control the cross-strait relationship via some pro-independent mechanism, either electing pro-independence party or purchase, or basically pro-independence party, or, or showing, uh, showing their determination, then they are, uh, they, 
they have a better sense. They have they can face a stronger opponent with more confidence. And secondly, if people are determined, if most people perhaps are not that determined, but then if people are determined, then they probably are ready to give up um, uh, their economic well-being and and fight Chinese because you look at the D1. So determining determination factors would be related to willingness to fight and the capability to fight. Uh, the third uh, factor is legitimacy factors. If people feel um, they can enhance their legitimacy through popular polling, then they feel better control of cross relations. Now this is not just cross Taiwan Strait, I think. This is not just about Taiwan-China relationship because if you, if you don't look at the contents, specific contents of the questions, if you look at only these three factors, then that, uh, that analysis can actually be applied to all asymmetrical relationship between Vietnam and uh, China, Cuba, and the United States. And also we could say that if people have determination, they will be willing to challenge the stronger party. If people can generate legitimacy in their um, choice, in their policy choice, then they will be willing or they'll be ready to challenge the stronger party. If people have means to give them a better prospect, then they will be willing to challenge the stronger party. So this is not just about Taiwan-China relationship, this is also about whether or not in an asymmetrical relationship the weaker party is psychologically ready to challenge the stronger party. I think that would be very, very interesting implication. And I have some other interesting maneuvering here. Uh, if you... Come down. No. <laughs> Doesn't listen to me. I... Ah. This is the, uh, I put this three factor on uh, a figure. Um, just, this is just for your, for fun. Okay, uh, we we have two dimension: independence and the peace. Where you place yourself, and the three the three dimension basically show you that uh, uh, independence and the peace could go hand in hand. Okay, if you if you have pro independence party uh, as our leader, then you can have independence and the peace at the same time. Uh, determination factors: if you are ready for independence, you're willing to give up peace. Okay, that's what we show in the factors. And the legitimacy factors, uh, as long as you have legitimacy, it doesn't matter whether you are for independence or you are against independence, you will have peace. Okay, that's, that's just the uh, way if we put on the map. Another analysis. Factor analysis is how you group the answers and try to figure out the uh, statistics statistical association among different answers. Now, I, I also run a cluster analysis, which help you to know how, uh, how, how respondents, how people can be grouped together according to the way they answer the question. It's not grouping the answers, it's a group of people. Okay. And I group this, uh, uh, I run a cluster analysis um, along the three dimensions we just show you uh, through the factor analysis. Basically, uh, well, cluster analysis allow you to decide how many clusters you want. It, this is not like a uh, it's not like a factor analysis. The machine will generate factors for you. In cluster analysis, we researchers have to decide which how many clusters we, we want. So I decide to ask uh, my uh, my assistant to run three cluster, four cluster, five, six, seven. And I have all those results and I compare them, I find this is really lucky. I mean, I have a very good fit if I have five clusters. Okay. So I, there's almost no problem this time just to pick up how many clusters you want. I want five because all the other three doesn't show all this good fit. This five cluster suggests to you that there is a group of people, it's a group one, I should name it, but I. Maybe I'll do that later on. Um, uh, 
I don't know why I didn't name them. I, I thought I love to give people a name. Anyway, uh, people who have less confidence in DPP or, or their chance for fighting uh, will have stronger determination. That's interesting because since they don't think they can, they can uh, maintain peace, they want more arms. <laughs> Okay, and they don't, of course, they don't think voting matters at all. <laughs> you can see this is all very strong because uh, beyond one is very good, and then almost every every numbers is greater than one. I mean, this is uh, this is really lucky. Um, and the second group of people show inactive to all three. I I didn't really trying to. Uh, um, generate story from this cluster, but I guess I could. I could have very good stories out of this uh, five different group of people. Group one, this is group, there's a group of people doing this, and this group of people doing that. Uh, this group of people, of course, is very pessimistic. No, I can do anything. I don't have, there's no way legitimacy will come, no. Um, but then you, you see there are different kind of people there. It's not just one kind of people dominating everything. It's not just pro-unification people or pro-independence people. Pro-unification probably is too strong a word. It's not just pro-independence and uh, neutral or non-independence people. It's not, it's not that easy. You can just... There are five group of people showing very different preference on, on different uh, factors. And this uh, fifth group is also Very, very useful. You, you can see positive on all three uh, factors. Uh, but one thing is interesting is that, although I didn't give a story to all five groups, uh, but then you can see one interesting implication. Uh, for the fifth group, which is, of course, not only just pro-independence, but very confident of the prospect for their becoming independent. If they really want to mobilize people into pro-independence, they really can't do too much. See, if you, if you look at the other four groups, if this group want to st stress the importance of leadership, for example, if you have pro-independence party, then you can achieve independence. At least three other group people will say no. If they say, well, you know, get arms from the United States, then we'll, you know, fight Chinese and we will beat them. Another three group of people say no. If they say, well, you know, just vote for independence, two group of people say no. So even though the fifth group of people is probably the um, tap root of independence in Taiwan, they probably the I don't know where they are. They're definitely not in DPP because I don't see determined independence people in DPP. But they're somewhere in the society. Uh, and you can imagine why uh, these people, when they articulate their positions, they had a hard time to convince the majority of the people. Because whichever dimension they take on, there will be probably a, a, a significant number of people alienated from their position. So it's hard for them. That's something, uh, uh, I don't know, the, 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 the uh, marketing people for, for really pro-independent forces should look at and try to design something out of this. But this is just tell you, it's not easy to promote pro-independence position in Taiwan. Although you find over 50% of people willing to fight for independence. But in terms of marketing or promotion or in terms of articulation of their position, it's not easy. Um, that basically tells all the uh, results I have. Uh, but I forgot to make the acknowledgement in the beginning. Let me just do this. This is sponsored by 21st Century Foundation. Sorry about that. I like the foundation, but I uh, forgot to uh, thank them. Uh, but then uh, uh, this actually conducted by Professor, uh, Professor Chang, Zhang Yuzhong, who um, in the beginning, that he, he did a uh, 
kind of an experimental, experimental survey in a very creative way. He he went to he has his assistants went to all those universities who uh, had um, what do you call this professional degree school or night school whatever because those schools recruit students from society everywhere so basically it's a small society and they are elite because they you have to be uh, you have to be college graduate educated before you enter this kind of professional school so uh, so it's a good it's a good test out of that test. Uh, then he ran a uh, in-house survey from the random sampling, which is of course becomes extremely expensive. But but because the first stage of research with all those college-educated professional school uh, students who are basically over 35 in terms of age, ed educated in college, so they're like uh, opinion leaders. Uh, we have very good fit there, so the foundation will support us to uh, to expand. Uh, into in-house survey and randomly selected from uh, Taiwan population statistics. This is very, very expensive, but then thank you, thanks to the foundation that we were able to do this. Uh, so uh, I don't have a uh, really uh, wonderful um, system, systemic, sy systematic uh, uh, theory to give you, uh, but I think this uh, in uh, preliminary result is already interesting enough. It generates very good fit of three factors. It shows you a uh, overall and opti uh, pessimistic picture about how people feel their 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 control over cross relations. But then it gives you a very strong hint if people uh, feel they are able to control, they must be. Uh, performing much better on these three dimensions. So if you are Vietnamese, you want to fight against Chinese, you have to tell people, you know, if you unite together, then you will be able to fight. Uh, that's a legitimacy factor. You show your, your popular support, and then the Chinese will give in. Uh, that doesn't mean that Chinese will really give in. It just means that uh, people will feel they are able to challenge uh, the stronger side. But I mean, if you look at history, uh, because of doing this project, I'm working on asymmetrical relations. I started reading literature on asymmetrical relationship, and the puzzle seems to be there for a long time. Although international relations theory generally failed to explain why, in an asymmetrical relationship, when the when the weaker party decides to challenge the stronger party, the stronger party decides sometimes, oftentimes, decides to concede. There isn't much research on that, but I think. Um, it will be interesting to, to look at it. If uh, all the people in the world uh, can be in some way caught by all these three dimensions, then that means uh, people in the stronger uh, power will also follow the same logic, right? That means that if they see the weaker party can gather enough group of people popular enough to show their uh, displeasure with the stronger party. The stronger party probably will give in because they don't think they have legitimacy. If they don't have the legitimacy, they probably will let you uh, have what you want for the time being, right? In order to, to restore it, or at least to, to uh, stabilize a symmetrical relationship, right? Imagine if China, uh, China and Vietnam coming together and fighting over this uh, on the whole, but then uh, fighting over this, this uh, territorial, maritime territorial uh, sovereignty, uh, if the Vietnamese decide to escalate, wouldn't that be a much bigger problem for China in the longer term? Why would China suffer that? Why wouldn't China just uh, settle down on the issue by concession? Why don't they just do that? Why don't China just say, well, North Korea, you killed this guy who really pro-China, then I'll punish you. Why, why would China do that? Um, so, so, uh, so although this is uh, a survey on the weaker power, but if you go to the stronger power, I don't know if they do the same. If you do the same, if you run the same survey in China against the United States, would you probably get the same thing? Perhaps I don't know. Uh, that that could perhaps indirectly explain 
why in an asymmetric relationship, the weaker party can still manipulate in certain ways in order to get concession from the stronger party. Um, this, but of course, they rely on much extensive research in the future. For the time, for the time being, I think I'll stop here and uh, hear your comments and feedback. Thank you. And we take questions. Do you want me to? Anyone? Questions? Charles first, and anyone? We take one first. Uh, professor Shi, thank you for your presentation. I'm Charles Chen, research, research associate in the center. And I must say, it must be the uh, most positive talk that I have ever heard from you. And uh, I didn't expect to listen to so many econometrics in such a political talk. Um, and from your data, um, in my understanding, uh, probably people in Taiwan can be grouped, such as you say, three clusters. And uh, in my, uh, uh, in my uh, interpretation, I would say people would, uh, they want peace, uh, they desire peace for three different reasons. One is they calculate. One is they believe. One is they, they obey. So there are different reasons. And what impressed, what impressed me is they are so different from each other because they either belong to this group or this one or the other one. There is not a significant mixture among them. So my first question, actually I have two clusters of questions. <laughs> <laughs> so my first cluster is why people in Taiwan, they want peace in such different ways. And uh, uh, what is the reason behind? Because there must be a reason to explain why people differ each other in such a significant way. So this is the first cluster uh, of question. And, well, another one in this cluster is, how about the KMT and the DPP? Which cluster these two main parties belong to in your uh, uh, theories or in your models? The second the second cluster of question uh, falls on the. Uh, well, another uh, cluster. That's that's a, how do they change? That there there should be a time scale behind this. Why? How? How come do Chinese people become such uh, a model? And uh, will they change in the future? Yeah. Okay, that's two cluster of questions. I can only answer with uh, more confidence to your last question. Will they change? Yes, if you look at the uh, cluster analysis, that's actually the message there. You could combine your answer in very many ways and uh, you get this five cluster. That means that easy for people to change the position and still feel being with a group of other people. So it's not difficult for people to change. And if you look at the cluster, there are five different clusters. It's not difficult for people to change. So it's uh, the the structures there is uh, ready for people who want to change the positions. I mean the the structure of population. Uh, you have five clusters showing all different combinations. Okay. But the other two questions, uh, you know, since this is empirical, I. I, I really can't answer where DPP is, uh, or KMT are on this, uh, but you, you might want to ask them. I, I suspect that they will be wide uh, spread on all these uh, clusters. Mm -hmm. DPP itself or KMT itself will be. So maybe there will be more people belonging to the fifth group uh, in DPP. I, I'm not even sure of that. You know? um, so, so really, we have to uh, depend on if. You know, I probably could get the data uh, because 
this is only a small part of the result. We have about 50 questions asked in total. And we also have people's uh, uh, party affiliation. Uh, so maybe I can just run a party affiliation of, of this. And uh, it depends on how much you want to pay. I mean, uh, <laughs> uh, but I mean, this is, this. well, I actually acquired um, consent from the foundation to show you this. Uh, but the other part, I don't know. I don't know whether they, they want to show or not. Because there, there was someone in the foundation who wanted to run the president, I hope you know. So, I, so, so, so they probably don't want to show all the result. <laughs> because the foundation was founded by Eric Jew's uh, father-in-law, right? Right, right, right. Yeah. Yeah, but, but then the, the research itself is conducted by, by us. Any questions? Can I ask one? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, sure. uh, I'm interested to know um, if you can, I think you probably have already in your mind, uh, if you can tell us what's the five names you give to each cluster. No, I, I, I don't have it. You know, it, I just feel I'm so somehow negligent. I should have because I, I love it to do this. It should be quite interesting. Yeah, I yeah. love to do this, but then I... I, I saw I, you being I don't know uh, why. modest. <laughs> I don't know why I forget. I just... How is the proportion between five different clusters. I mean, uh, because you got, no, you got a thousand know, people. Yeah. Maybe the, the cluster five is very big yeah. or very small. If you, if we don't yeah. have this information within... Uh, it's the technical fault on my side because I, I can't do this myself. I don't know how to run SPSS. And uh, it's not my assistant. He just... Uh, right. It's, yeah, it's technical fault on my side. I, I'll try to talk to Professor John and let's see whether he can get Maybe. his uh, assistant to do this for me. Oh. Anyone? Oh, yeah, David. Uh, 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 I have a question. One of the things that you mentioned was the... Um, um, you mentioned that there was a sense of pessimism. That was one of the key findings in, in this study. Um, and I was wondering, even though you, you probably don't have the equivalent data, but to what extent is there a ch pattern of change there? In other words, if we did this survey mid-1990s, uh, would the results have been very different? Because I know you've mentioned you've been talking to your students about this for, um, uh, for, a, for a long time. Uh, any impressions on that? Um, I think the data in itself, although I, I don't have this longitudinal uh, statistics, but I think that the structure of data itself already shows it's highly changeable. Mm. It's very volatile. Uh, but then this itself is a very, uh, uh, it, it's a strong harbinger for anyone who try to uh, affect the result. Um, on the one hand, you can say, wow, uh, I really can you know, mobilize people in a very short run since you know, it's, it, it appears that uh, the society on the whole, it's not very fixed to any certain position. There's no structural pattern. Mm -hmm. Then I really could generate something uh, through some productive means in the short run. Uh, but in the long run, you say, "Gosh, I really can't do anything because these people are, you know, uh, looks like that they can do, they can think in any other ways <laughs> tomorrow." <laughs> so. So I guess um, it's a good thing for politicians, that means they can manipulate. Yeah. It's a bad thing for statesmen if they really want to do something. You know, it's not something that they you know. <laughs> so even though I don't have the longitudinal statistics, you really already can tell the structure is very you know, shaky. Anyone? Yes. Uh, uh, Professor Shu, thank you for uh, sharing the very insightful survey with us today. And uh, according to this survey, uh, and I wondered that could we suggest that uh, maybe some of us could revise the previous impression or the previous uh, argument, argument that claiming that uh, the people of Taiwan, the ultimate value of people of Taiwan, is to pursue the peace.